what are the results of climate change so far in terms of its impact on temperature and why does that matter? Yeah, the temperature is already increasing at uh, an unprecedented rate. You know, the uh, global temperature has increased more than one degree Celsius over the last century, the, which makes the temperature today warmer than the planet, warmer than uh, it has been in the Holocene, which is the past uh, 10,000 years. In fact, we're at least half a degree above the prior maximum in the Holocene. So that implies you leave this temperature in place indefinitely, and it's going to cause some long-term changes, including sea level and shifting of climate zones. But uh, the real threat is how much more it's going to increase. Uh, if we're already with the temperature rise of a little more than one degree Celsius, in the last century, we're approximately at the temperature of the Eemian, which 120,000 years ago. And that, um, that is threatening because of the fact that sea level was 20 to 30 feet higher at that time. So we really need to uh, actually draw down some of the CO2 out of the atmosphere if we want to avoid still additional warming because the planet is now out of energy balance so the one degree warming, two degree Fahrenheit warming is actually going to increase if we just leave the atmosphere at its present composition. So we actually need to get it to decrease. And that's possible because the ocean is taking up CO2. If we would stop emissions then the amount of CO2 in the air would decrease fairly rapidly because it goes into the ocean. Uh, but um, you have to uh, stop the emissions if you want the CO2 to decrease. What are the results of climate change so far in terms of its impact on extinction of other species and why does that matter? Well, we know from the Earth's history that climate change can affect species and even drive species to extinction. The reason that the current climate change, if it continues, is a particular threat to species is the rate of change of global temperature is now at least 10 times faster than any known uh, change in the past. The rise so far is still moderate, about one degree Celsius, but if we continue that rate, it's going to affect a species because any given species uh, can only live within a certain climatic zone. And unlike humans, they can't, they don't have air conditioners. <laughs> um, so they will have to try to move to stay within their climate zone. In some cases, that becomes not poss possible. For example, uh, a species on a mountain, if the temperature moving up the peak, it gets, the animal gets to the top of the mountain and there's no place to go. <laughs> so uh, w we threaten the existence of a significant fraction of the species on the planet if we stay on business as usual. So far, the stresses on different species have been, I think, more for other reasons as humans essentially take over the planet. But when you combine those stresses with rapidly shifting climate zones, then there is the threat that you can drive uh, species to extinction, and that's uh, an irreversible process. So that's the reason, that's one of the many reasons that we want to um, slow down emissions and uh, stabilize atmospheric composition. How much time do we have before climate change makes growing food and living on the planet just too difficult? How much time do we have uh, before climate change makes the planet practically uninhabitable or very difficult to live on? Well, 
we're beginning to see impacts now. Um, so it depends on where you are. We, we're very close if you happen to be living on a South Sea island, which is not far above sea level. So for some people, we're uh, almost there. Uh, it, it, uh, so it depends, but the uh, best way that I have found to try to quantify the issue is relating to sea level because we established most of our cities on coastlines. It was for uh, practical reasons, commerce, you, uh, we communicated uh, among countries by ships, but also because the coastlines are biologically uh, rich. The, uh, the, the fish resources there is a very uh, good source of protein and, and food. And so we established our infrastructure. A large fraction of our infrastructure is on coastlines. So that uh, is what I think establishes the lowest level of a, a really big threat. And the problem is that we, we realize that threat, we're very close to locking in unacceptable consequences for, um, for coastal regions and therefore for the future of young people and, and their children and grandchildren. Um, hopefully, this will sink in to uh, global politicians and we will get over the next several years, we'll begin to move emissions down and move to clean energies because it's still possible. But if we stay a few more decades on business as usual, then I think it's impossible to avoid loss of uh, global coastal cities.